Hello and welcome to this video on finding the prime factorization of a number. Now from previous videos we already know how to find the facts of a number. So if we said find the factors of 8, then we know that 1's a factor because 1 goes into 8 a whole number of times. 2's a factor of 8 because it goes into 8 a whole number of times, it goes in 4 times. 4 is a factor and 8 is a factor. And if it's a factor of 8, we could write 8 as a kind of product of these numbers. So 8 we could write as a product of say 1 and 8, a product of two of its factors. We could write 8 as 2 times 4, a product, i.e. a multiplication of two of its numbers. But if we want to just write 8 as a product of its prime factors, well, the only prime factor of 8 is 2. And we could write 8 as 2 times 2 times 2. We've written 8 as a product, i.e. a multiplication, of its prime factors, in this case just 2. And we could write that as 2 cubed, because 2 cubed means 2 times 2 times 2. So let's do some examples. We've got, say, 12, and we want to write 12 as a product of the prime factors that it has. Now, one way we can do it is to have a tree. So we kind of divide 12 up into two numbers that multiply to give it. So what two numbers multiply to give 12? Well, we could have, say, 4 and 3. Now, if you get a prime number, I tend to circle it, and then we can stop at that point in the tree. Now, 4 is not prime, so we can split it up further into a product of numbers, and you're not allowed to use 1, by the way. Now, 4 is what times what? Well, we could do it as 2 times 2. Now, 2 is prime, so we can circle those, and now we've got a complete prime factorization tree. And that means we can write 12 as the product of its leaves, these circled numbers at the bottom. So, you could write 12 as 2 times 2 times 3. 2 times 2 times 3, and we could write that more concisely as well. We know that 2 times 2 could be written as 2 squared, because 2 squared means 2 times 2, times by the 3. And there we go. That is the prime factorization of 12. Let's do another one. So question 2, we want to find the prime factorization of 90. So let's split up 90. Now there's more than one way of doing it, but we end up with the same answer. Uh, 90 we could write as, well, 9 times 10. And then neither of those are primes, so we have to split up both further. So 9 is 3 times 3. Now they are both primes, so we can circle them. Now 10 is not prime, so we have to split that up. We could write it as 2 times 5. Now they are both prime, so we could circle them. And that means 90 can be written as the product of these circled numbers. So let's put them in ascending order. 2 times 3 times 3 which we could write as 3 squared, 3 squared means 3 times 3, and then the 5. And by the way, even though we could have split up 90 differently, we could have had, say, like 30 times 3, we always end up with the same prime factorization. And the name of that is known as the fundamental law of arithmetic. You don't need to know that, but it is a thing. Now, what about this third one? We've got 7, 5, 6. It's not immediately obvious what numbers it divides by, but what I tend to do if it's a big number is to find a small number that we know goes into it. So this is even, so we know that 2 certainly goes into it, so we then just have to divide it by 2. So 7, 5, 6 divided by 2, or 2 goes into 7 3 times remainder 1, 2 goes into 15 7 times remainder 1, and 2 goes into 16 8 times, so we can put that there. Now that is prime, the 2 but this we can split up further. We can see it's even, so again we could divide it by 2. 2 goes into 3 once, remainder 1. 2 goes into 17 8 times, remainder 1. And 2 goes into 18 9 times. So we know it's 2, which is prime, multiplied by 189. And now I can spot that this is divisible by 9, because the digits add up to 9. 1 plus 8 plus 9 is 18. That's multiple of 9. Now, if the digits add up to multiple of 9, then the number itself divides by 9. You may want to look at my video on divisibility rules. So we know that 9 goes into it. And then if we divide this by 9, well, 18 divided by 9 is 2, and 9 divided by 9 is 1, so it's 21. Now, neither of these are prime, so 9 can be split up into 3 times 3 which are both prime, and 21 is 3 times 7, which are both prime. So that means 7, 5, 6 can be written as the product of all these numbers here. So how many 2's we got? We got 1 2's, so we could write that as 2 squared. 
how many threes we got. We got one, two, three, so that's three cubed. And then we've got this lone seven. So we, we don't need to write seven to the one, we just write seven. And then this final one, we've got one, two, three, seven, five. Well, what's an obvious number divided by? Well, five, because it ends with five, so it must divide by five. So let's divide it by five. We'll do a bit of long division. One, two, three, seven, five. Divide by five. Well, five goes into 12 twice, remainder two. Five goes into 23 four times, remainder three. Five goes into 37 seven times, remainder two. And five goes into 25 five times. So we got this. Now it ends with a five, so it must divide by five again. And let's note that five is prime, so we can circle it. So if we do the same thing again, t four, seven, five, divide by five. Five goes into 24 four times, remainder four. Five goes into 47 nine times, remainder two. And five goes into 25 five times. So we got five again and four, nine, five. Five is prime. Oh, it ends in five again, so we can divide by five. So four, nine, five, divide by five. 5 goes into 49, 9 times remainder 4, and 5 goes into 45, 9 times. So we've got 5 and 99. 5 is prime, 99 is not. Well, 99 is 9 times 11. 11 is prime, but 9 is not. 9 can be written as 3 times 3, which are both prime. So we are done. Now we can just write this as the product of all these leaves, these circled numbers. So let's start with the smallest number. We've got two threes, so it's three squared. How many fives we got? One, two, three, so five cubed. And we've got that 11 there, so 11. And that is the prime factorization.